Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Wednesday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Again today, we've got a special program for you. I'm actually going to play a DVD of my teaching that I did in Phoenix, Arizona in January of 2012. And I was talking about how that the Lord showed me in 2002 that I was limiting what God could do in my life because of my fears, my small thinking. And I tell you, this was revolutionary. I mean, instantly I repented and I began to start changing some things. And I mean, my whole life and ministry was transformed. I believe it's the second most important encounter that I've ever had with the Lord. And uh, so here I am teaching this in Phoenix 10 years after I had this experience, not only talking about what God spoke to me, but showing the results of it, showing the fruit and showing that if it works for me, it'll work for you. And I really believe that most of us are, are thinking way too small. We limit God with our own fears and we transpose all of our problems onto Him. God is not limited God, except by the way that we believe by our own fears. So this just transformed my life. I encourage you to watch this, receive from God, open up your heart, and if you will receive it, I guarantee you this will transform you. It certainly has transformed my life. I'm just saying that, you know what, uh, we've bought into this. We've just been trained in the natural way and people accept living at a low standard that you got to get sick every year. You got to have the flu. You've got to have headaches. You've got to have this. You can't go. You can't live 60 years without having any pains. I don't have a pain in my body. I'm 62, nearly 63. I don't have a pain. I've been sick one time in 40 something years and that was through stupidity. That's because I ministered 41 times one week and 42 times the next week. And I got so tired, I had to literally crawl into bed. And I waited one day and stayed in bed one day trying to recuperate and then went out and split a cord of wood and it was too much too quick and I got sick. And that was just stupid. You can chalk that up to stupidity. Amen. But that's the only time I've been sick. I just don't believe in getting sick. I don't take sickness. Some of you, you can't live that way. Well, don't wake me up because that's the way I'm living. Somebody, you can't do that. Well, see, that limits what God does in your life when you expect sickness, when you expect these things. You're comparing yourself among yourself. And not only is this true in your health and in your finances and in the things that are happening in this world, but you know, it's true in the spiritual realm. Most of us, aren't truly seeking God and in close relationship with God and listening to what God's telling us, but we're looking around and we have to wait until somebody rises up and starts believing for healing and see a miraculous healing. And then all of a sudden we get inspired that maybe there could be more. But we, we basically just look around and, well, most people don't see everything come to pass. So I guess it's normal for me not to see total victory. And we limit God by the way we think. 10 years ago, I thought, and I was believing God, and I was believing God more than I had in the past and compared to everybody else. This is right after September the 11th, 2001. And did you know that the typical ministry, I could name names and give you specifics. I won't do that. But most ministries decreased anywhere from 25 to 35, 40% decrease after September the 11th because everybody's attention was on that and they quit watching the television, listening to the radio and they were listening, trying to figure out what was going on and they were giving to uh, Red Cross and other things. And so anyway, most ministries, I mean major ministries went on the verge of going under. Did you know that se September the 11th, our income has just doubled and tripled and, and increased and we, it was right after September the 11th and we were still increasing. We were setting record income months. It's not like I wasn't believing God. I don't want you to think that you have to be an absolute zero for this message to apply to you. You could be doing better than the average person, but does that, have you just lived up to the average and do a little bit better and then that soothes your conscience? Or are you going to God and saying, God, 
Am I comparing myself among myself? Am I limiting you by just wanting to be kind of like everybody else? You ought to go to the Word of God and find out what God's Word says. And I guarantee you, God's Word will make you far, far, far above and not beneath. You talk to some people and say, how are you doing? And they say, well, pretty good under the circumstances. You need to tell them, get out from under there, amen. <laughs> You're supposed to be above only and not beneath the head and not the tail. We're supposed to be rejoicing in the midst of problems. There is not an excuse. There are reasons that we have problems. I'm not condemning any person and I'm not saying that we live in a perfect world and that everything's just going to work out rosy. But I am saying that God did not make you for failure. If you have failed, if you're experiencing problems, God loves you, but He doesn't want you to live there. God wants you to win. God created you to be a winner. You're a winner. A friend of mine says, he says, man, you're a winner from birth. There was a million different sperms competing for that egg cell and you won. Amen. <laughs> you're a winner from the very beginning. And I'm, I know some of you are thinking, well, this gets you excited and it feels good. But, you know, practically, unless you do all of these things and do this and this and this, it's not just the way that you think. This is more to it than anything else. I believe it's the number one key. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. In my situation, when the Lord spoke this to me, I called my staff together. And I told him, I said, look, I don't know how long it takes to change the image on the inside. But I have limited God. I've not seen myself doing what God has told me. And I was even telling some people what God had spoken to me, but I couldn't see it. I was limiting God. And I said, I don't know how long it takes to change this image on the inside. It, said, I, it may take a week, a month, a year, 10 years. I don't know. But I said, I will change. I will do what God called me to do. And I told my staff that. And I didn't have a clue how long it would take. But did you know within one week, my whole life got turned right side up? Within one week. I had been trying to go on the second largest television network in the nation for five years. Or no, it couldn't have been five years because I'd only been on the television for two years. So it was about two years. And I had, I had been on this network. I was friends with the people who ran it. I had been on their program over five times. They had get, let me preach for 45 minutes at a time. I was personal friends with them. They loved me. And yet every time I tried to go on their network, they would give us a price that was double their rate card. It's like they didn't want us on there. Our media buyer tried to get on and it was just, it did not make sense why we couldn't get on the network of people who were personal friends and who were treating us good. And did you know when I made that decision and told my staff, I said, I'm going to change this image on the inside. Within two days, I got a letter and he said, why aren't you on our network? He says, I don't know what the problem is, but you plan on starting Monday and we will just work out the details on finances. Do not let that stop you. And within one week, I was on that network. And it just increased our television outreach tremendously. Jamie and I had been praying for somebody to help us in the ministry because Jamie was running the ministry as far as all the administrative stuff. And she's doing a good job, but it's not her forte. And it was growing beyond us. And we needed help. But how do you find somebody with your heart who will let you give everything away? Every person I'd had running our ministry told me, you're crazy. And especially when they saw our finances and how we were struggling, they would say, sell your stuff. Quit giving all of this stuff away. And so Jamie just took it over and ran it because she had my heart and we agreed that this is what God told us to do. Within one, I think it was only a couple of days after I called my staff together and said, I'm going to change this image on the inside. David Hardesty, I called him for a board meeting and had to cancel the board meeting 
And he says, oh, I'm glad you called because Gail and I have decided we're going to take early retirement from Sears. He taught in Sears University. He had been trained by Sears for 37 years and yet he'd been on my board and had my heart. And he says, we're going to take early retirement and come out and take your ministry to the next level. And I just, my chin nearly hit the table. I wouldn't have believed that somebody with David's background and stuff would leave it to come for us at that time. At that time, our income was pitiful and our ministry was small. And yet he took early retirement and God, I mean, I made a decision and instantly my television outreach tripled. The people that we needed, God started adding it to us. Larry Bozeman here has administrated three hospitals and gave all that up to come to school and now works for us. And he's just a quality guy. Larry Hodge had thousands of people working under him. God is just bringing me these people that have done things that are so far beyond my experience. I couldn't do what I'm doing without them. And I mean, it was just hours of me saying, I'm going to take the limits off of God and everything happened. And it took me two months to send a letter out to my partners and let them know about what God had spoken to me. And then another month for people to respond. And yet, so that was about two to three months before anybody heard from me about what God said. And yet instantly, within a week, our income began to double. Nobody knew anything. I didn't tell them. They didn't respond to me. But there is something that happens in the spiritual realm. I don't know how to explain this, but I'm telling you the way you think in your heart controls things in an unseen realm and how things work. If you think you're cursed, you know, there's a scripture that talks about Paul said, we are a sweet savor to those who believe and to God. Now this is, it could be totally an analogy that he's using. I don't know if there is really such a thing as a smell in the spiritual realm, but for the sake of analogy, you are putting out a fragrance that either attracts good things and draws all of the angelic beings and all of the good things, or some of you are just like poop that will draw every vile thing, every fly, every maggot, around to you. I mean, all of the demons in the county are drawn to you because your attitude stinks. I believe that's where we got that phrase from is that your attitude stinks because it, it draws stuff. And some of you draw problems to yourself. You're a griper and you're a complainer and you're negative and you do not believe in the positive things and it just draws demonic stuff to you. But when you go to believe in God, I guarantee you, it does something in the spiritual realm and it releases things. You've got to see God's purpose for your life and take the limits off and go to believing that God has something more for you than what you've experienced. Let me just real quickly, I'm going to end with this, but I wrote down some of the stats because when I taught on this 10 years ago, I was telling people that this was big. And this is going to make a difference. I told people, I remember saying this, hide and watch. Well, here's what happened. In 2001, the Lord spoke to me January the 31st, 2002. So the previous year, here were our stats. Total calls for the ministry in 2001 were 24,305 calls. In uh, 2011, our calls were... 367,347 calls. 15.11 times as much people calling us through our phone center as what we had. Our total contacts in 2001 were 66,490. In 2011, 594,522. That's awesome. Did you know we now have over 1.1 million people a month come on our website and none of that's included in these statistics. We have, what does that translate to? 38, 39,000 visits every day of the week, 24, 7. On our website, none of that's included in here. That's awesome. We had 30 employees in 2001. Now we have 230 Plus, we don't even know how many. I mean, I don't. Somebody does, but <laughs> we got over 230 employees now. 
And I don't know if those stats do anything for you, but I tell you what, that is phenomenal. And again, I, I just don't have the words to explain. Some of you, you live in a different world than what I'm talking about right here, and this may not ring your bell, but this is as rare as hen's teeth. <laughs> We've been going through a quote-unquote recession, and yet God is just multiplying us every direction that we turn, and it all started... January the 31st, 2002, when God told me, you are limiting me by your small thinking. And I'm going to talk about some other things, but it was also because I didn't feel worthy of being a, in a position of leadership like that. I had to change the image of myself and what God could do with me. I'm going to talk about all of these things. But when I changed my thinking and I started believing differently, I've seen the supernatural power of God. And brothers and sisters, there are many of you in this room that are sitting there thinking, I would like to see something like that happen. I'd like to see God just, you know, pour out such a blessing that I don't even have room enough to receive it. Many of you want this, but in your own mind, you're rejecting what I'm saying is the thing that caused it. I'm 10 years away from this. It's not like this is an emotional thing and I'm guessing at this. I'm giving you stats. I'm telling you exactly why this happened. And I'm telling you that any person in here could begin to see God start multiplying you, increasing your effectiveness, doing things in your life. Your life could transform and it doesn't have to take 10 years. It could start within a week or two if you got your thinking straight it may take a while for the full manifestation to come. I'm still, a lot of the things God's doing in my life are still five or 10 years off. But you know what? I hadn't arrived, but I've left. I'm on my way. And there's some of you that hadn't left. There's some of you that are stuck. There's some of you that want things to be different, but you know what? If you don't change the way you're thinking, you're going to be back next year in the exact same spot, praying and asking God to do something, but it's not God who's limiting himself. It's you that's limiting him by your stinking thinking. And you're going to have to change the way you think. You're going to have to quit comparing yourselves among yourselves and measuring yourselves by other people. And you're going to have to start studying the word and find people in here who did the extraordinary and say, God's no respecter of persons. If he did that for that person, he'll do it for me. And you're going to have to start letting the Word of God challenge you and the Holy Spirit speak through you and paint a picture of who you are supposed to be and what you're supposed to be doing. And I'm telling you, bro, it just, it breaks my heart in a way to talk to some of the people that come to these meetings and their life is just pitiful. And they're acting like I'm, I just can't do anything. I'm so helpless. God didn't make a single one of you helpless. You have the power and the authority of God on the inside of you. And if your life is all messed up, it's because somewhere Satan has had a dominance in your life that God does not want him to have. And you've allowed that. Or sometimes it's other people. You can't control every other person and what happens to everybody else. But if you can be going through a fire, but if that fire's gotten on the inside of you, you allowed it. You can walk through a fire, but you won't have the smell of smoke. You won't be burnt if you keep your eyes on the Lord. I'm not saying you won't have problems, but I'm saying you'll be winning and you'll be overcoming those and you'll have a testimony about how the faithfulness of God has brought you through all of it and how you're winning. And if that's not your experience, then instead of praying that God change everybody else, or God just rains a miracle down out of heaven, you need to let it come up out of the midst of you. You need to start taking the limits off God, not comparing yourself to other people. We have a testimony of Connie Weiskopf. I've put her on our television, I think twice in the month of December. And some of you might remember, but she's the woman who was healed of cancer. 
and she now runs a pregnancy center. She used to use abortion as a method of birth control and had many abortions. And anyway, God just supernaturally healed her. And when Connie got sick, her family and friends and everybody says, you need to find out everything you can about cancer. Go on the internet, study books, start researching it and find this out. And the Lord spoke to her and says, no, Connie, find out everything you can about healing and what I've done. Don't focus on cancer. But you know, this is what most people do. When you get into problems, you start focusing on all of the problems. You start reading all of the stuff by the people who don't even know God. And they're going to tell you about how that 99% of people that have what you have die and you're going to do all of this. And you know what that does? It limits what God can do. You ought to be reading the Word of God where all things are possible to him that believes. You ought to be putting those scriptures up on your uh, mirrors and on every place. And you ought to be speaking the Word of God to yourself. But most of us are limiting God by being so plugged into this world and comparing ourselves to what is going on in everybody else's life. There ought to be a difference between you and a person that doesn't know God. You're alive and they're dead. There ought to be a difference between a corpse and a person who's alive. And yet there are some of you that are as sick as your neighbors, as poor as your neighbors, as depressed as your neighbors, as negative as your neighbors. And they don't even know God. And you're born again. And nobody, if you were arrested for being a Christian, there wouldn't be enough evidence to convict you. <laughs> there ought to be a difference. I'm not saying any of these things to condemn you, but I am trying to stir you up and motivate you. If I don't stir you up, you're going to sink to the bottom. So I'm trying to stir you up and let you realize that, man, God made you for more than miserable. God made you for more than average. If you're average, that means you aren't good or bad. You're lukewarm. Man, you ought to go for it. What have you got to lose? Somebody say, well, I could die. What's wrong with that? We sing songs about when we all get to heaven, then the doctor tells you you're going there and you cry. <laughs> Something's wrong with this picture. You know what? We got nothing to lose. Just go for it. And if you fail, who cares? Man, go to be with Jesus and he'll tell you what you did wrong and it'll be over. <laughs> but man, I'd rather go for it and die trusting God than to shoot at nothing and hit it and just play it safe and live your life being miserable and average. God didn't make anybody to be average. He made every one of you to be special in your own unique way, in your own sphere of influence. And God wants to do something that just makes your life awesome. If that's not the way you feel, then you need to take the limits off God. You're limiting God. Amen or oh me. If you can't say amen, you ought to say oh me. If what I say rubs you the wrong way, it's like a cat. You pet it and its hair stands up. The way you solve that is you just turn the cat around and keep petting it. <laughs> if what I say rubbed you the wrong way, the way to solve it isn't for me to change what I'm saying. It's you repent, turn around, and this will go to feeling good. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Andrew's complete teaching titled, Don't Limit God Times 10, was recorded live at a recent Gospel Truth seminar. It's available on either CD or DVD, or if you prefer, you can get the DVD as seen on TV. Each is available for a gift of any amount. Every album will also include the Don't Limit God sticker. This reversible static decal will cling to your window or mirror, reminding you not to limit God with small thinking. Remember to specify CD, DVD, or DVD as seen on TV when you contact us. This series is also available for audio download absolutely free on our website. Go to awmi.net and click on Today's TV Offer to see all the ways you can get this teaching. The first audio teaching in today's series is titled, Wrong Beliefs Limit God. It's available for a gift of any amount when you write or call. 
We encourage everyone to give, but if you're simply unable to afford it, Andrew and his partners will provide this first CD free of charge. You can use your credit card to order resources by telephone. Our helpline number is 719-635-1111. Helpline hours are Monday through Friday from 4.30 a.m. until 9.30 p.m. Mountain Time. If the lines are busy, you can visit our website where you can order ministry materials 24 hours a day, 7 days a week at awmi.net. To write us, use the address on your screen. We appreciate your generosity and hope to hear from you today. We'd like to point out Andrew's upcoming speaking schedule. Mark your calendars to come meet Andrew at one of these events. In the month of September, he'll be in Charlotte, North Carolina, Johnson City, Tennessee, and in Colorado Springs, Colorado. And in October, he'll be in Walsall, England, Victor Harbor, South Australia, Melbourne, Victoria, Australia, and in Carrara, Gold Coast, Queensland, Australia. For more details on Andrew's next meeting in your area, visit our website at awmi.net. If you are a full-time minister, I'd like to invite you to join me on September the 30th through October the 4th as we have our Ministers Conference right here in Colorado Springs. This is always a highlight of the year. We have Bob Nichols, pastor of Calvary Cathedral in Fort Worth, also Bob Yandian from Tulsa, Oklahoma, are always with me and we minister. I tell you, it's going to be a great time. It's just a special time for ministers. Plus, our building is nearly going to be complete. You'll be able to go visit that up at the sanctuary in Woodland Park. Remember that the dates are September the 30th through October the 4th right here in Colorado Springs. As you can tell, I'm not in our studio today, but instead we're up in Woodland Park, Colorado at the place that I've named the Sanctuary. And we're in the process of building a Karis Bible College facility. And I'm just convinced that this is what God has led me to do. I spent four hours today ministering in our Karis Bible College, and I tell you, it's, it's exciting. I had a number of people come up to me and just tell about how this had just totally changed their life. And we see this happen every single day. So I am committed to taking the things that God has shown me and putting it into this Bible college. And so this is the first step. And I believe that together we're gonna to get it done and God is gonna be changing people's lives. Now is the time to call, write, or go to our website to join our family of ministry supporters. No one else can fill your place. Our helpline workers are waiting for your call. If the line is busy, write the number down and call again later. Andrew is appealing to those of you who have been touched by this ministry to help him build this building debt free. If the Lord has used Andrew to touch your life, he's asking you to respond financially and help him build this building and equip thousands of new ministers with the good news gospel. This is laying the foundation for a gospel revolution, which we pray will shake the body of Christ. The bottom line is that this goal is within reach for all of us. Don't miss your opportunity to become a world changer today.